my friends it's tack today i'm going to show you my top 10 wood processing tools let's check it out so i guess we'll start smallest to biggest the smallest item is blackjack tack ops 4 convex grind 1095 carbon steel beautiful blade the handle is super ergonomic fits really well nice jimping not too aggressive and just the perfect size for that small wood tasks now jumping up in size just a little bit bigger if I want something just a little bit bigger that can do fine whittling still but a little bit of batoning a tiny bit of chopping dark timber honey badger this thing is one of my favorite knives period I mean super ergonomic the handle it's just this is one of the best fitting knives that I have Nice choke up on it. CPM 3V tool steel. Thanks, Peter Kohler. You the man. This is definitely one of my favorite blades. So if I got to go a little bit bigger, do a little bit of more real batoning. Survives knives. GSO 10. CPM 3V tool steel. This thing is a beast. Barely looks like I use it. Oh, no, there's tests of me using it. It's just I tried to clean it up really good. And the finish is freaking awesome. Super ergonomic again. Some people th say it's a little skinny for their hands. I don't know. I, I think it's like pretty much perfect. Nice choke up if you do have to. Super solid st stout blade. I mean, this thing is awesome. For my next wood processing tool, time for something a little bit more serious. Time for an axe. Actually, a small forest axe. Grants vs. Brooks, small forest axe. Man. This is one of the few things I gave a 10. Actually, I think I gave all my Grants vs. Brooks a 10. I, I freaking love these things. I mean, the weight, the balance, the steel. I mean, it's just beautiful. Nice, beautiful hickory handle on it. Fits really well. And it's a lot of power for the size. Small forest axe is a, a great size, especially for backpacking or something. But if you're going to do some more serious work, another Grants vs. Brooks. The Scandinavian forest axe. I mean, it's just just long enough to get some real serious power and chop down some decent sized trees. So those are the axes I choose for small tasks, chopping down trees. But what if you gotta split some wood? Another Grants Forest Brooks, the splitting mall. Miss Tack bought me for a present for Christmas. Man, another another ten. Right here, I mean, this thing is freaking razor sharp. I know moles aren't supposed to be razor sharp. Well, this one is, and I love it like that. So if you're interested in a review of that, check out my playlist on axes. This thing is epic. Now, well, sometimes you'll need a saw. Here's a nice, super compact one, the Silky Saw Super XL 21. Previously reviewed, this thing did a great job. Yeah, it's not the biggest, but for small chores, this thing will definitely do the trick. Tack, that's a nice saw and all, but that thing is way too puny for me. Okay, how about the Katana Boy 500? Oh man, oh man. Now I have a video. Let me back up so I can get this fucker in the screen. I did a vid on this. I cut down. It was a dead tree, but it was probably about 12, 14 inches across. And it didn't take me that long. So actually I keep this in my pickup truck. Just in case if I'm driving home and storm trees down can't get by at least i can get out and do some work now to do some real wood processing because obviously look around me living on my homestead i'm surrounded by nothing but trees and i almost heat strictly with wood i got a pellet stove in the basement but for first floor second floor it's wood stove or you're freezing to death so wood is super important so wood processing that's high on my list so time to break out the heavy artillery now, for smaller chores, delimiting small trees, got my paw saw. This is a Husqvarna 359 chainsaw. Probably leaking oil right now. It leaks like a sieve. Yeah, I know the chain's loose, because when I store my chain or my chainsaw, I leave it loose until I go to use it, and then I'll tighten it up. But this thing has been great. The only down part to this is when it gets hot, sometimes it is tough to start. It does have a decompression. On the other side but sometimes after it gets hot it's kind of a bear i put a 20 inch bar on it and this thing actually works great 
So for number 10, my final wood processing tool, yeah, just recent, well, multiple times, but just recently I ran into this problem again. There was times where that saw wasn't cutting it. Yeah, I used to have an 18 inch bar on it and I put the 20 on it thinking, okay, I'm good. No, nope, there's some trees out there that are just too big for it. And it just didn't have enough power. I'm not dissing it, I do love it and it is old. So I had to get me a new saw. The steel 391 with a 25 inch bar. I've only used this a couple times. Oh my God, this thing, it, it's a tank, it's a tank. But yeah, baby, man, I love this thing. So for the serious heavy duty wood processing, I'll break out my steel 391. Well, I did forget one super important wood processing tool I have outside. Uh, that should have been like top 11, whatever, but I totally forgot. It's my wood splitter. I did forget that. So there's my top 10 list of my most important wood processing tools. And like I said, I, I needed a bunch around here, especially them chainsaws. It's, I ain't living without that. I need wood to survive because I'll have no heat living in this old log cabin, 1969. Uh, if anybody's interested in maybe me doing a review of some of them saws, just for something different, put it down in the comment section below. As always, it's good to see my people. And until the next time we meet.